Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, in case you missed it, some of you might have, some of you might have not. Well, severe season is cooking right now. We have a day four enhanced risk, not a slight risk, an enhanced risk on day four here. The last time this was issued was actually about a year ago. So it's ironic about the timing here. Last time was April 3rd in 2023. And we had a pretty notable severe outbreak with that, and the conditions seem to be setting up for a similar situation to occur here once again. And then we also have a day five slight risk as well here. I do think that this is going to be stemming off of the April Fool's Day threat, but this will probably be more of a prevalent early morning threat, maybe may make it to the afternoon, maybe just after lunchtime, but I don't expect this to be a long duration threat. The April 1st threat or the day four threat, I would expect to be a little bit more of a lengthier ordeal here. I still have some questions in regards to storm initiation and storm mode. However, if things do verify as they have been verifying and trending, especially with the GFS, we could have a very busy day with all hazards possible on our hands here to start out the month of April. This is where we are starting to get towards peak severe season, so it's not uncommon to see this, but this is just our reminder. We are in springtime, we are in severe weather season, and right where we're expecting the severe weather to be, of course, is over towards Tornado Alley, so make sure you're keeping your guard up over there. Let's go ahead and get into the analysis here, so let's go ahead and pop our screen over. So here is a quick overview of our setup over here. Looking at the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere, this is what we have going on right now. We have this trough that's just now starting to make its way into the picture here. This is going to be coming in in the next day across parts of the west coast. But as we continue to go forward here, we'll see two troughs here begin to develop. And one of these is going to eject. So yes, I'm saying those dreaded words, trough ejection, usually results in some trouble here. And this ends up being the case as we, of course, head into Monday here, April Fool's Day. So this becomes the area of interest, as for mentioned before, in the previous section with the Storm Prediction Center. With this ski jump look that we always tend to look for when it comes to severe weather, we could have multiple areas of interest. Missouri is going to be one point, but I also think Illinois is going to be another, along with this region over here towards Oklahoma and Arkansas, particularly eastern Oklahoma. I do think that there could be a couple other points of interest as well, but I think the most prominent areas for severe development are going to be across this section where we're going to likely see several short waves develop. And as a result, we could see potentially an outbreak of severe storms here, all of which could have the potential to produce large hail, damaging winds, and of course, tornadoes. As we continue to move this along into the following morning, I do expect these storms to form more so along the cold front boundary that we'll end up getting here. And as a result, I'm expecting more of a linear event where we're going to start to see a little bit more along the lines and damaging winds here. But with this still comes the threat of a few isolated tornadoes, maybe not quite as impressive in magnitude as what we could get on Monday. And keep in mind, none of this is still guaranteed right now. In fact, we're not even in range of the convective models yet. So a lot of this is still kind of up in the air. And there is a lot of model disagreement. I'm just showing you the GFS because this is what's been kind of staying consistent with this. Some of the models have kind of downtrended this as well. But if we go into that following Tuesday, as you can see by the time we get towards 15Z, a lot of this storm system has downtrended significantly, not looking quite as vicious as it once did. Still could produce a little bit of discrete severe weather here and there, maybe across mid-Atlantic, but by the time we get into the afternoon, this threat has pretty much diminished almost entirely. Now, some things that we will be keeping an eye on here, even though we're still at a pretty decent range with this, is stuff like the low-level jet here. And this is what I think has gotten a lot of the weather community's attention here. And like I said, it's a pretty good reason to have confidence in a severe weather setup. We've seen very, a very large number of severe weather setups like this in the past. So it almost be what you would call a textbook severe setup. And once we start to get into the morning even, 
we already could see that low level jet trying to build in early but by the time we get later in the afternoon let's say 21z right here this little strip becomes a point of interest this is not going to be far away from that surface low either so like i said definitely has that look of a setup that is more than capable of producing all hazards I do have my concerns about the tornado threat. There is one thing that I have noticed from yesterday's model runs that have gotten my attention here is that this isn't looking quite as vigorous as it once did. So it's a slight downtrend from there. We're probably gonna see a bit of flip-flopping with the trends from this point forward here. Like I said, I'm really eager to see what the convective models will show for this as we continue to go forward here. But a lot of what we're gonna be looking for is that speed shear and directional shear and it looks like we definitely have the speed shear in the right place it's more so directional shear that we're kind of starting to fall off on just a little bit but it's still more than sufficient enough in my opinion for severe weather and then we still end up seeing a little something like that as we go towards the overnight hours and into tuesday here of course not quite as prevalent but one thing i want you to remember and we saw a great example of this with that Ohio tornado outbreak earlier this month. We didn't really get any of the inklings of that outbreak occurring until maybe a couple hours before. In fact, I remember even doing a forecast right around that 10Z time frame, which was, I would say, maybe mid-morning. And those dew points, for example, which were a big part of that trigger for that setup, still weren't anywhere near what was forecast. We ended up getting mid 60 dew points, but at 10 Z we were seeing 50. So like I said, don't sleep on this. Just stay tuned. We'll be here and plenty of others amongst the weather community as well. Goal's all the same at the end of the day. We wanna keep you safe. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the thermos here. And this is a big reason why there's a lot of concern here is the dew points. And if you look over to the bottom left corner here, you'll see the temperatures as well. Those temperatures are getting into the 70s and 80s as we get further along and getting closer to that day. And you already see a really impressive moisture return the day before. So that's a very good telltale sign that we have something going on here. What Another thing I want you to make note of is as we go on throughout the day, just look at how much moisture is continuing to be pumped in from the Gulf. And then look at this contrast that we see here. This has got that look of a dry line for sure here. But look how strong that gradient is there. We got 65 degree dew points in the moist sector here. And then once we go behind that dry line, instantly from 65 to uh, pretty much 43 and then even 38. So pretty strong uh, contrast right there. So very strong dry line, going to be a very effective lifting mechanism. So it, it's not really a question of if storm fi storms will fire. It's more so when. <clears throat> so that being said, really the timing is going to be the key to everything and what kind of storm mode we end up getting. I think the closer that we are to that dry line developing, if it lags back, I think we're gonna have a later storm time and maybe more of a linear mode. This far as earlier in the day, however, we could see a multicellular, supercellular mode out of this. The potential is definitely there at this point in time. And then as we go into the evening, I do think that there could be a multicellular mode over here towards the southern part portion of the Ohio Valley here. But again, like I said, by the time we get into the afternoon, this threat has diminished greatly. We lose a lot of that moisture that we, we would need for these storms to keep going here. May have to watch that threat a little bit further to the south for a little bit longer in the day on Tuesday. But for the most part, just all the ingredients start to really fall off at the further into the afternoon we get that day. So like I said, not really going to be a long duration threat on Tuesday. Monday's really the day of interest right now. Of course, as we said before, things can change pretty easily here. So a couple other things we'll look at before we take a look at what our simulated radar could look like for this time frame here. And we're going to mainly be looking at what our instability is looking like. So here we are looking at our instability here. Keep in mind that we aren't in range of the convective model, so the parameters that I'm looking at right now are somewhat limited. So we're only going to be looking at surface base cape for now. But even so, that's still a pretty good indicator of what we have going on for these next couple of days here. So this is, of course, the April 1st setup here, the April Fool's Day setup for those of you that do celebrate it. 
I, I still like the holiday myself personally, but that's besides the point here. You can already see an impressive amount of instability and it's right towards that little area of interest I spoke of earlier here. So let's say towards southeastern Oklahoma, we're getting those Cape values up to about 1700 plus joules per kilogram and we're going to continue to see that persist as we get later into the evening now this sector eventually kind of loses its instability especially as we lose our daytime heating but watch what happens as we get into the morning hours over towards the ohio valley here we start to see a nice little surge right around 12z and it really spikes at about 15z so like i said can't sleep on this ohio setup while it doesn't quite look that impressive again like i mentioned before in the last section the setup that we had that produced that tornado outbreak over towards indiana ohio originally even in the morning forecast did not look that impressive i remember doing a video right around the time of quote unquote 10z which would be just a little bit after eight, nine o'clock, closing in on 10 o'clock in the morning, my time. And it still didn't look that impressive. Really, we didn't get too much in the way of indicators till about maybe just after lunchtime. So it's amazing just how quickly things can change with these severe weather setups. So again, if you live towards these areas, it's not like it can't happen here again, I should say. So not trying to scare anyone, but definitely Keep an eye on the weather if you're over here towards northern Kentucky, southern parts or southeastern parts of Indiana, and then, of course, towards southern and central Ohio. Then also, we can't sleep on the threat that exists also across eastern Kentucky, eastern Ohio, and then even over towards West Virginia and even Virginia itself as we go further into the afternoon. While I wouldn't expect too much to come of this threat, still something that we need to keep an eye on if we look at the, the uh, sounding and skew t chart nothing particularly impressive but the hail threat is definitely there and there is a damaging wind threat to go along with this if this wasn't an elevated setup i would be a little bit more concerned with the tornado threat that and if the kinematic setup as a whole was stronger but even so it's not like that tornado threat is zero either so like i said be prepared for everything whether you you're under the gun for Monday or Tuesday. Of course, as we get later into the evening, the overnight hours, the storm system is going to be out of here and the threat will diminish from that point. But nonetheless here, this is not a setup to sleep on on either day. If you happen to be under an area of interest or an area of risk, best thing you can do for yourself is to make sure you are keeping an eye on the weather, heeding the watches and warnings and going on from that point. So last but not least, to close out the video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar could look for just these two days here mainly. So this is, of course, the day before. This is our storm system rolling in here with our area of low pressure. And here comes that little secondary low right here. It's going to be our trough ejection. So we'll watch this storm system roll out of here. And then here is that next system coming in behind that. And then here is our explosion of severe weather right here. Big area of interest right over towards eastern Kansas, eventually working its way into Missouri. And that's when business picks up. Start to see this squall line develop, fizzles out, and then more of the activity pushes towards the Ohio Valley along with the low. Here's the look of another potential squall line here. And really, like I said, towards 15Z is where I'm kind of interested in seeing what happens with that. Secondary squall line looks like it tries to develop towards the southeast, but the ingredients just aren't really quite there. The uh, lifting mechanism and everything else that will be essential to severe weather is more so off to the north at this point. And then as we go further on throughout the day, you can see a little bit of activity again over towards West Virginia, Maryland, and maybe even parts of Virginia itself. <clears throat> and then we'll watch this storm roll out, but not before bringing in a little bit of lake effect snow towards the eastern half of the Great Lakes and then towards the northeast before dumping some heavy snow on the 4th as well. So that's pretty much all I got for you on this setup here. Pretty stout storm system that we're going to be dealing with over the next few days. Still some questions to be answered, but the ceiling for this storm system is pretty high. So again, make sure you're heeding those watches and warnings. Make sure you have that bell on here so that way you get notified of updates here since we're back in business. That being said, Hope you guys enjoyed the video and you found it useful. You know what to do. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. And hit that share button as well. 
See you again soon. This has been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Have a good Friday.